Hello everyone. In the last video, we saw how we could add a table remotely from Visual Studio. So you are working with table storage and you need to create a table and you do not want to do it from the Azure portal, probably because from an application, an application requires um, some kind of storage and the table storage is the most appropriate among the different um, categories of storage that we have in the storage accounts. So we saw how we can do that from Visual Studio. In this video, we are going to be seeing how we can add entities to that table. So in the last video, I also explained the structure of, um, of table storage. I said that within a table, so you have a storage account, then you have a table. Within a table, you have entities. You can have one or more entities. And inside an entity, you have a property value pair. So let me share my screen so that we'll go to Azure portal. Yeah, hopefully I believe you can see my screen now. So um so because we are working with storage accounts, I will just come to storage browser. Then I will click on tables because we are we are considering table storage now. And we have a number of tables here. So for this demo, for this lab, we'll be working with this customer's table. So if you can see it's empty. So we want to add entities to it from Visual Studio. We want to remotely add entities to it. So as I said, you can add entities from your browser and your entities contains property value pairs. So we want to add some of these. So let me cancel. Yeah, so we are going to be going to Visual Studio very soon. But before we really do do that, let me just show you where I am getting, um, I mean, the documentation that guided the source code that we are using. So I think I'm still using this one. So this is the Microsoft documentation that I used to come up with this, um, to the to come up with this lab. So I just took content from here and customize it to what I want to do. I'll be adding the link in the description. It's very straightforward and easy to use. And um, we'll see how it goes. So let me share my Visual Studio now. Yeah, I believe you can see my screen. So um, as usual, we are using agile.data.tables as the library that we are using for this project. Then we have our namespace. Then we declared some static variables that we are going to be using. The storage URI, the account name, storage account key, as well as the table name. So there are two ways of actually um, authorizing um, your table storage to have access to your table. So you can do it this way, which is using um, a SaaS URI, or you can use the service client. I believe it was the service client I used in the previous video that we did on how to create a table remotely. I use the service client where I just use the connection string. I connected using a, a, just a connection string that combines everything together. That can be cleaner, but it, for this video, I'm using this um, account name, storage account key, and the likes. So um, I wouldn't waste time on this because we've already um, gone through some of these things. We are just authenticating. But from here, this is where the action begins. So as usual, for every entity, if you can recall, I said you must always have 
a partition key as well as a row key. And I said the row key should uniquely identify that entity. So we are um, defining our row key and our partition key here. So we, we remember that this is a table for customer. The name of the table is customer. So our row key is, I just came up with something and I'm using customer 001. And the part for the partition key, I'm using the name of the customer as the partition key, just because this is a demo. Then um, we now want to make use of this table entity class. And um, it always goes with two parameters, which is the partition key and the row key that we are using um, from the previous declaration. Then um, we can now pass in our property value pairs. So I want to add, so these are the properties I'm adding in addition to the partition key and the row key. I'm adding the location for that customer to be Alaska. I'm also adding um, the amount of money that customer has in his wallet to be $5,000 or Naya or CDs or something. Then I'm also adding his email to be davidmark at gmail.com. Then um, just as a confirmation that it's, um, it's truly working. So I am also console logging into um, um, into our output screen before um, I actually add the entity to um, to Azure. So we have um, um, table entity row key. We are fetching the row key. So if everything works well, it should say that table entity dot row key should fetch customer 001 from um from Alaska as five thousand dollars. So let me include the um currency. Let me use Naya. Let me use Naya. That's the currency in Nigeria by the way. So I think let's just try this. Um this is just standard um appending parameters into a string um, using the dollar sign and something that is used often when it comes to C sharp and even um, JavaScript. Just that in JavaScript we use, instead of double quotes, we use um, the other type of quotes. I can't recall the name now, slanted quotes. Okay, so I think let me run it and let's just see the output. Just a simple code and it was inspired from what is in um, the Microsoft documentation I showed you earlier. I hope my storage account key is, um, is still valid. I hope it's still valid. Yeah, so let me share the output screen so that you just see what we have. Yeah, so you can see what we have on top, customer 001 from Alaska as $5,000. Um, so I <laughs> imagine I'm using dollar symbol and I'm also adding, I, I forgot that dollar symbol was part of the, um, the string, but that is that by the way. So let me stop sharing and let's go to Azure and to confirm that it was truly, um, it was truly uploaded to Azure. The entity was added. Yeah, so this is where I'm going to refresh now. If everything works well, we should have the entity here. Let me refresh. And yes, we can see. So we can see the partition key, David Mark, the row key customer 001, the timestamp, which is added by default, as well as the location being Alaska and the wallet being 5,000 Naya. 
So I believe with this simple video, um, we can see how to add individual entities to um to a table storage. How we can add entity uh, with its property value pair. In the next video, we are going to see how how we can add a batch of entities that have multiple entities at a time into a storage account. So instead of adding just one. We want to see how we can add like five or like 10 at a time. So that's what we are going to be doing in the next video. So um, I believe you've learned something new from this video. Have a nice day.